so I and just, it would be like so you turn that around and be like oh so you're admitting that the laundry is your job then. oh yeah i mean that's effectively what they're saying when right. they're like oh now you're home it's your yeah. job to do the laundry yeah and be like well whose job was it before <laughs> i know it's the job of the person who least hates to do laundry <laughs> yeah and if you haven't had that conversation with your wife yet about what chores mm. belong to who you probably should I can't My wait. wife hates mowing the lawn <laughs> yeah. more than I hate it, un <laughs> if believe it or not. So <laughs> I didn't think that was possible. Yeah, it is. It is. So I can't wait till my kids can do the laundry. Uh, we've right. been teaching ours. That's so. awesome. Yep, because they're whining about it. So we, sh they help Sarah fold the laundry. So mm -hmm. they bring it to her and she folds it. Then they put it away in their drawers and yeah. they complain about that. And we're like, really? This you want to complain about that? We're going to teach you how to wash and dry laundry. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Chloe cannot have her clothes go in the dryer. She's got to have them hang dried. Oh, yeah. Because they're too tight on her. Mm -hmm. Like, she just, uh, I don't get it. Yeah. So I'm like, you can start doing your own laundry then if you want all these stipulations on it. Yep. You know? So we do that. They unload the dishwashers now. So that's been huge. Mm hmm feeding the cats mm -hmm. stuff like that so. that's good but i mean <coughs> just the same way as when they couldn't do anything we have a list of chores that we need done and me and my wife have agreed which ones belong to which person yeah you know so yeah and that adjusts and changes over time mm -hmm. so. yeah another one that bugs me I, I just had it on the tip of my tongue um infants oh. being out with your infant and like they're crying and people look at you and are like uh oh better call mom or better get that yeah. baby home to mom yeah stuff like that my kids were both bottle fed so really it didn't really matter if it was mom doing it <laughs> yeah. or me doing it i was just as just as able to have my kid out in public yeah. for eight hours of the day as my yeah. wife was yeah and just things like there was a time i walked my we were out shopping it was like winter it wasn't raining but it was kind of cold and i walked my daughter from the car seat into a store so across the parking lot without putting a jacket on her between the car seat yeah. the warm car yeah. and the warm store uh -huh. and these like two old ladies just started chastising me about being an irresponsible father for walking my daughter across the parking lot and be like uh it was stuff like that just bugs yeah. me um making yeah. you know oh her mother never would have put her life in danger that way yeah yeah <laughs> like, i um lady her mother left her in the car with me i know <laughs> i was coming in to go into the store with my daughter yeah i uh what happened one time i'm trying to remember i just had it on the tip of my tongue <sighs> it'll come back to me what uh Somebody said something really stupid to me too. I can't remember it. Oh, mm -hmm. we'll just move on. I'll, I'll I'll think of it in a second. But yeah, the last one I want to mention is with mothers who are athletes or politicians or anything like that. They always get the question, "Well, what what's going to happen when you want to have kids?" Yeah, and males never get asked that question. Yeah, and I think that that's that's another one of those stereotyping or um just sexist things that we deal with yeah and people realize that it's bad for females to treat them that way but they never think about like what about males the men yeah why do you never ask a male athlete or a male person running yeah. for mayor what's going to happen when you want to have kids yeah you know like yeah and I know I'm a millennial, so I'm supposed, and and it's so stereotypical of me to push for paternity leave or something like that. But just the whole idea of paternity leave versus maternity leave, uh -huh. it's like I had a kid, I had kids, and I wanted to be at the hospital for both of them, and yeah. I was at the hospital for both of them. Yeah. But like my boss was like, oh, I was never in the delivery room with my kids. <laughs> How and old be, is he? Like seventy? Like sixty he, something? Oh, yeah, yeah. And it so. would be. And his kids were younger than me, so they were like 20 years old, 25 years old. But it would be like, so that was you. So I know. you didn't want to be there for the birth of your kids. Yeah. I want to uh -huh. be. <laughs> yeah. Okay. What's the big deal? I didn't ask for like 
five months off. I wanted the ten weeks or whatever I, it is. I didn't want. To, I didn't want that. <laughs> I didn't even ask for that. I, I, my one of my kids was born on a Wednesday, so I took Thursday and Friday off and was back to work on Monday. Yeah. Um, I understand the argument against paternity leave, and I, I think both paternity leave and maternity leave, there's a lot going on there financially for employers mm -hmm. um, that needs to be taken in, into account. Yeah. But I just I, I find it frustrating when dads are treated different like that. Yeah. Like, it's an adjustment for a dad to have a newborn at home, too, because the mom is basically not paying attention to anything else but that baby yeah. at that point also. So, yeah, the so. other the dad needs to be there to do the other things. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, oh, I remember what the yeah. comment was okay. about. Um, when I get Chloe, this was a couple years ago, but when I would get her and Caleb ready for school, I'd send them to school, and then Janie had like a meeting with, some of the women there at the school mm -hmm. and Janie was like yeah they said oh we can tell who did Chloe's hair today oh my gosh and just like yeah I didn't do it because to me that's not important what's important was she was fed and on the bus and not late you mm -hmm. know like we just there's different things that we find important mm -hmm. you know and furthermore you know how women are always like men are so just gross and just looking at women and how pretty they are and just looking at appearances and like okay well every time i see two women that's all get to get about. get together they go oh that's a cute scarf like you're the first one to talk about appearances so mm -hmm. like, you know it just kind of kills me like yeah <laughs> don't get me started on that i just uh, oh your dad must have dressed you today nothing matches yeah i would look like, at him and be like no actually she chose she chose her she own wanted clothes the, yeah <laughs> She wanted because that's more important to me is for them to be a little bit more independent on yeah. picking out their stuff. Yeah. Than it is for me to match everything. Yeah. Uh, Alrighty so yeah. then. <laughs> Alrighty. Yeah. So this was interesting. And also, we don't. We're not trying to be like these dads that want all this attention. We're just trying to take care of our family. We're yeah. not trying to be out there on social media like oh, we're better than everybody and we just want all the limelight. You know, we just. Yeah. We're just trying to take care of our kids and family, you know? Yep. So, yeah. But it's getting better, I think. I think people are recognizing it. And, I mean, it's just switching. Like, women are more out in the workforce. And I think, like, women own businesses. Don't they get some perks for it's a woman owned business? You mm -hmm. know, that's what I see at the bottom of certain, like, businesses. Woman owned, mm -hmm. you know? So. Yeah. So we just we're men and women are different in how we take care of kids, but at the end of the day if they're safe and yeah. fed and taken care of, that's all that matters really. Yeah. You know. The end is this the end is the same, the end result end desire is the same for both. Mm hmm Just the way that we both executed is a little bit different. Yeah. So different right. intents so dads maybe want to teach their kids to be a little bit tougher or you mm -hmm. know adventurous take more risks things like that um, yeah so yep cool all righty that was awkward <laughs> it was <laughs> our rants yep okay well it's all right next let's talk about white people yeah and Goodness! How unjust it is for us nowadays. <laughs> the white man is minority now. No, I don't know. <laughs> I saw something last night. Oh, it was Brooklyn Nine Nine. It was uh, Gina. Oh yeah. She, she said, "This is such an injustice. It's just as unfair as segregation." And, and Terry <laughs> and uh, the captain are like, "Nope, nope, nope." nope. nope. It's just nope. like too far. Too far. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, that was funny. <laughs> so that brings us into our nerd talk. Like, what types of comedy do you like? Yeah. What's your favorite kind of funny people? Like, what is it? I've been, like, reading a couple books on, like, comedy and humor and, like, why certain things are funny mm -hmm. and not. And it's very interesting. Cool. But, um. I have to borrow this. Yeah, yeah. Um, I, I'll, I like cringe comedy. Uh-oh. Kind of like The Office. It's cr because Michael will just say something oh, to Pam. Like awkward, yeah, inducing comedy. Yeah, just okay. and deadpan. Mm -hmm. Like 
He'll be like, ah, oh, yuck, Pam. Oh, you take those glasses off. You look ugly. And she, it's just like, and I'm just like, oh gosh, I can't believe you said that. Like, That's what she said. Yeah. <laughs> Stuff like that. Yeah. Yeah. Um, there's a black comedy, yeah. which is like very just out there, aggressive, like. Um, you mean dark? Dark. Oh. Yeah, bla- yeah, dark. It's like there's black comedy too. <laughs> no. <laughs> Bernie Mac. No. And, and those guys. <laughs> Rest in peace. Yeah. But um, like Lewis, Lewis Black mm-hmm. is black comedy. He's just rants about all this stuff. You know? Yeah. I got a couple of those that I like. So I put down dark as the kind of comedy that I like. Yeah. Doug Stanhope. Um is a guy who will just be on stage smoking and drinking and ranting. He's he's highly libertarian comedian, oh, so he's hilarious. You so he, you're already on board with him. <laughs> yeah. Um, and he So he's funny. Um, Anthony Jesselnick. Oh, Jesselnick. Jesselnick. Oh, man, he's very um, cringe. It's, that's cringe comedy right there. Yeah. I, like, I enjoyed his uh, Netflix specials that yeah. he's got. <laughs> his girlfriend was like, Honey, do you think shrivel- chivalry's dead? He's like, no, honey, chivalry is not dead. You're thinking of your mother. Yeah. <laughs> Just like, <laughs> I like that kind of comedy, dark stuff. Yeah. People that joke about things you're not supposed to joke about, yeah. like death, uh, cancer, uh, stuff like that. Yeah. So I think that's the job of comedians in many cases is yeah. to go to the places that other people don't want them to go mm. to. So things that are uncomfortable to talk about in, yeah. a, in a normal conversation. And I think that that, uh, there's a cool bio or, um, not biography. Um, what's it called? Documentary, documentary, uh, called, can we take a joke that's come out in the past year? Huh. And I think that that is actually the role of the first amendment is to protect the type of jokes that make us feel uncomfortable hmm. so that's kind of what the the point of the joke is all these comedians like seinfeld says he won't even play college campuses anymore because uh college kids can't take too, jokes yeah, and get too offended offensive. too quickly yeah and those are the ones that want people want to outlaw and that's exactly what the first amendment is for i will go in both directions the first amendment is to protect speech that the left doesn't like and speech that the right doesn't like Mm. and neither side really holds it up to that they'll be like oh you can joke about you know um you can joke about millennials and their you know hipster stay at home yeah stay at home with their parents live in the basement kind of stuff but don't joke about gods and guns and stuff like that and then the other side is like you can joke about religion all that you want but don't joke about races and yeah. differences yeah, and stuff it's like, like that. Yeah, what which what do you pick? Like yeah. how are you supposed to know the line? And I don't think any any good comedian can offend everybody. No. Cuz you have to have things that you hold sacred yeah. and pick on everything else. Yeah. But I think comedy as a whole should be the stuff that offends everybody. <laughs> <laughs> I think wow. I think everybody should be offended by somebody in comedy. Do you, do you think? And if everything is just safe, then do you think the reason why why somebody gets offended is because there is just a little bit of truth that makes them think about that makes them think differently about mm-hmm. what they're so I think, offensive about? Yeah, I guess I think some of the the best comedy is the stuff that hits close to home. Yeah, and. Uh, you know, has a has truth in it. Mm. Stuff that's just blatantly wrong yeah. isn't that funny. But when it can hit close to home, like uh, the Facebook page that's been hugely popular in the past couple of months, the Babylon, Babylon Bee, Bee. I love that. It's super close to yeah. home for Christianity and you know, yeah. mega churches and yeah. fake worship music and all uh-huh. that kind of stuff. And because it's so familiar to us that's why it's so funny yeah in that sense um <laughs> what was the one it was like uh uh tim keller just found out tim keller is only gonna write 65 books this year because <laughs> yeah. he comes out with one like one, once a month or something you know or, yeah it's like um local pastor uh, local congregation just discovered all their pastor's sermons are U2 lyrics or something <laughs> like that. Yeah. So it's, yeah. it's stuff like that that's that hits close to home that causes people to... 
And I think that that's that's satire. Yeah. Um, I love satire. That's probably my favorite type of comedy. comedy. Yeah. yeah. So. Yeah. I put those down. I've got dark. I've got some stuff I don't care for, mm-hmm. and that's fine with yeah, comedy. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. The difference is saying, "Oh, I don't like it, therefore nobody should like it." Yeah, or, I don't like it, therefore it should be banned. Right. Yeah. <laughs> so I definitely have types of comedy I don't like. Okay, go um, ahead. Oh, you, what, what are those ones? Well, uh, cringe comedy when it becomes gross-out comedy, I don't really care for that as much. Like, like, gross, like pooping. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So, like, the extent of gross-out comedy that I care for is like Dumb and Dumber. You know the bath okay. the bathroom yeah. scene with the X lax yeah. and stuff. That's fine. Yeah. I don't really care for like there's something about Mary gross out comedy. Okay. American Pie. Um, I hate Tom Green. I can't stand him. <laughs> oh. He's like the worst kind of comedian in my mind. Yeah. Um. So those are the kind of gross outs that I don't care for. Mm-hmm. So there was a uh, I think they were on MTV. It was a uh, it was kind of like Jackass, but it was Wild Boys, mm-hmm. and it would not what you just said. You would not find them funny, but they would they'd go up to like a Panera window and like just poop on the on the door while or on the window while people were eating their sandwiches. Mm-hmm. That to me is hilarious because I just like to see the people's reactions like what the heck is going on yeah but to me that's funny but yeah i (laughs) i i don't like like sexual gross out stuff like the stuff in his hair in there's something about mary it's like eh, that's not really funny to me Mm -hmm. yeah but yeah jackass is on my list of stuff i don't like either yeah (laughs) and i because i i like physical comedy um but jackass where people are just getting when the when the joke is basically let's see how many times somebody can get hit in the nuts <laughs> that's not yeah. as funny to me yeah. as like um yeah i don't know i've got some it's... i've got visual comedy down here is something that i love mm-hmm. but jackass goes goes farther than i care to go oh, okay so. with your not liking sexual humor the other one i've got is language heavy humor yeah i've never liked like dane cook as, okay. As an example yeah. of one, yeah, um, I don't find him funny. And when language is basically just used as the punchline, I'm like, that's not funny. Yeah, people talk like that all the time. I don't crack <laughs> up because somebody said a bad word. Uh huh. So yeah, I don't, I don't, I don't think it. I think it's a little bit of a cop out too when comedians are like f f f f f. Mm-hmm. It's like you're not, you're just filling your time up with the that talk. Do something creative, you know? Hadouken!